Hello Internet and welcome to CodeBig. In this video, we will be going through and solving the single number coding interview problem. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. The single number problem is a tricky one. And hence, stick with me till the end of the video where I show you how the complexity of the problem increases from medium to hard and how our thought process should be when the complexity increases. With that said, let's get into the problem statement which goes something like this. Given a non-empty array of integers, every element appears twice except for one. Find that single one. Also, your algorithm should have a linear runtime complexity. The problem sounds very simple, right? If we take a look at our example one, we see that we have three array elements out of which the number two is repeated twice and hence we display one on the screen. In the same way, if we take a look at our example two, we see that we have five elements out of which number one and two are repeated twice and hence we display four on the screen. Pause the video right here and give it a try. You can find the REPL link to this problem in the description below. Welcome back guys, I hope you are able to solve it. If not, don't worry. Just think of it as your first step towards success. And don't forget to subscribe because we will be solving a lot of problems like this in the future as well. With that said, let's see how I would have solved it. Let me first create a function called single number and pass an array as a parameter into it. Down here, let me call single number and for now, I will pass the input in the example 1 to single number. With that done, let's think how to solve the problem. According to the problem statement, we should solve it in linear time, which means we can only loop over our array once. So, let's first create a duplicates array that holds the duplicate numbers in the input array. Next, let's loop over the input array. We are using for each loop rather than the traditional for loop. You can use either of them, it does not make any difference. Then in the callback, we say we need access to each element and their index like this. If we console log element, we see it just prints all the elements in the input array. Now we need a way to find the duplicate elements in the array. And to do that, we can say array dot includes element from index plus one. All we are doing here is checking if the input array includes the current element passed into it from the current index position plus one. If I console log the element and run it, we get two in the console on the right. And it makes sense because two is the repeated element. Now let's see what happens if we just do index here instead of index plus one and then run it. We get all three elements in the input array as duplicates. And was it what you expected? This happens because we are checking if the element exists in the current index position and it's always true. If we visualize this, we see that the number two always exists at position zero the duplicate number 2 exists at position 1 and finally the number 1 exists at position 2 and hence it displays all the array elements and consider them as duplicates. Once we have the duplicate value, all we need to do is check if that duplicate value by any chance already exists in the duplicates array and to do that we are using the index of. We can as well use the include method. It's up to you. I just wanted to show you that we can check in this way as well. The only difference between the both of them is that the index of method return the index of the element if it exists or minus one. In case of includes, it returns a boolean value. Now, after this check, all we need to do is push the elements into the duplicates array like this. 
Now that we have the duplicate number in the duplicates array, next all we need to do is write the else case, that is the case in which we don't find the duplicates in the array. If I console log the elements here and run it, you see we get 2 and 1. This is because if we visualize it once more, we see the first time through the loop, we check if the number 2 exists from the index 1 to 2, which is true. And the second time down the loop, we check if the number 2 exists at index 2, which is not true and hence we get the number 2 in the else case. But we know that the 2 is our duplicate number and should not be displayed. So all you do is add a single condition where we check if the duplicate array includes the current element. If it does return true and in the first case it does as 2 exist in the duplicates array, we should not do anything. We should only display the other case and in order to do that we need a not operator like this and console log the element inside it. That means we log the element that are not present in the duplicates array. That is our required output 1. If I hit run now, we get the desired result. We can update our input value from our example 2 and we see we get the output of 4 on the console on the right. So we have arrived at the optimal solution for this problem. Good job guys. From this point on, the problem gets even trickier. We have satisfied the condition of linear time, but if you take a look at our solution, we didn't pay much attention to the space complexity and that is what the interviewer tries to exploit. Now the interviewer adds a second constraint to the problem, that is, we should implement this solution without using any extra memory. That is, we should solve the problem by removing the duplicates array which we have defined up here which was the key part for our solution. Just pause the video right here and give it a try and see how you can solve it. Welcome back guys, if you were able to solve it, congratulations. And if not, don't worry, it's quite tricky and even I didn't get it right the first time. So since we are not allowed to use any extra space, what we need to do is think a little bit out of the box. All the traditional approach fail at this point and we need to do something like this. We know that the XOR operations of two similar number is 0 and unlike number is 1. Since we have only two duplicate numbers in our example, if we XOR two similar values, they result in zero. And hence, we get a single number from an array by XORing all its value. We can arrive at a single line of solution to this problem, which would look something like this. We need a single value, so we could do console log array.reduce. We use reduce when we need to get a single value from our array. Next, in the callback we say we need two variables a and b where a is the accumulator and b is the value that is passed in from the function. What we return from the callback is the result of performing XOR operation on a and b. So the first time through the loop our accumulator value will be 0. So performing XOR on 0 and 2 would give you 2. And remember, XOR operation is performed by converting the number to binary and then performing XOR on them. So if we run it real quick, you get the expected answer. Pretty sleek, right? As you saw now, we have satisfied both the condition that were put forward. If we compare our previous solution to the current one, you see there is a lot of code improvement and we have reached an optimal solution to this problem. That is the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If so, drop a like and leave a comment. See you in the next video, happy coding until then.